Up next on News 3, court proceedings are underway in the racketeering trial of a former Chester police officer. It just got a lot easier to get your consumer complaints addressed in West Frankfurt. A Massac County Hospital is hoping to make medical service much more accessible in Southern Illinois. And comic strip artists band together to make a pitch for a commemorative stamp. I'm Kathy Sweeney. News 3 is next. WSIL TV3, Harrisburg, Marion, Carbondale. And now, News 3 with Kathy Sweeney, Jim Razor with weather, and Mark Kiesling on sports. Good evening, everyone. A Chester man accused in connection with a contract murder and several arsons is in federal court. Former police officer Michael Carando appeared in Benton as his attorney argued pretrial motions. The 44-year-old Carando is accused of killing a Chester salesman and staging a car accident to hide the crime. He's also accused of conspiring to set three fires in an insurance scheme. Carando's co-defendant, 50-year-old John Buskell, committed suicide last week at a federal prisoner's hospital. Today in court, a federal judge ruled the facts that Buskell's guilty plea were based on will not be used against Carando, but testimony of alleged co-conspirators will be allowed. Jury selection is expected to begin tomorrow in Carando's trial. Two men who walked away from a southeast Missouri jail are back in custody tonight. The Pemiscott County Sheriff's Department says Stephen Lancaster and Zachary Carroll overpowered a deputy yesterday and fled. That officer remains hospitalized with minor cuts to his head. Lancaster faces charges of burglary, assault and criminal action. Carroll is charged with attempted robbery and first degree assault. At the state capitol tonight, a lot of talk, but very little information regarding charges of sexual harassment against Springfield's chief of police. Chief Kirk Robinson is on administrative leave, but no charges have been filed against him. The Illinois State Police conducted a two-month investigation of Robinson. The chief's attorney says the only wrongdoing in this case is the way police handled it. The investigation is expected to wrap up within the next two weeks. If you could vote in a state primary without having to declare a political party, would that change the way you vote? A bill approved today in an Illinois House committee would give you that option. It's sponsored by State Representative Gerald Hawkins of Murfreesboro. Hawkins says one of the biggest reasons why many voters don't participate in primaries is because they have to either take a Democratic or Republican ticket. The bill is now headed to the full House for consideration. In Carbondale tonight, the four people vying for two seats on the city council will square off. Incumbents John Yao and Keith Tuxhorn and challengers Maggie Flanagan and Mike Henry will participate in a candidates forum set for 7 o'clock at the Student Center Auditorium at SIU. The 14 candidates for Carbondale Township will also participate. A debate of a much more serious political nature is still going on in Washington as Democrats and Republicans look for a way to end the Senate standoff against President Clinton's jobs bill. ABC's Nancy Ambrose has more. On this vote, the yeas are 49 and the nays are 29. For a Three third time, Democrats failed to end a Republican filibuster of the president's $16 billion stimulus package. Republican leader Dole said his side is united in fighting for a scaled back package. There's just a fundamental difference in our parties. The Democrats like to tax and tax and tax and spend and spend and spend. And we like to cut spending first. If we can't cut it, we like to pay for it. The rhetoric escalated with Democrat Burt lambasting right. Republicans for their blocking tactics. That's a type of, that's a, that's a kind of blackmail. And of course, if, they, if the Republicans succeed in this instance, it'll be done again and again and again. Even the normally mild-mannered Chafee was say, testy. Well, you just be quiet over there. You'll get your chance. You've been right. speaking. Well, Senator Cobb, yeah. uh, things seemed a bit more gentlemanly in closed-door meetings off the things. Senate floor. <laughs> One senator said the broadest possible consensus is building among Republicans for a seven to nine billion dollar package. It would include funding for unemployment aid, highway projects, and child immunizations. During a negotiating session, Democratic leader Mitchell was asked where the White House stands on the talks. Well, their desire is to see that the president's package is passed. 
But several Democrats said the president has to be a player in this process. He was playing ball at the opening day game in Baltimore. But he may have to get more involved if this deadlock is ever going to be broken. Nancy Ambrose, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And just ahead tonight, the push is on to save some SIU technical programs set to close. And later, they may be hard to spot, but blackbirds have left their mark in Randolph County. We have it all at home. From today's hottest fashions to tomorrow's medical breakthroughs. Great money-saving tips and a whole lot more. Try it. You'll like it. I'm Gary Collins. Oh, and I'm Sarah Purcell. Look what's new at home for you. Everything that you need to know. It's surprising. It's fun. It's obscene. Get out of here. <laughs> it's Gary Collins and Sarah Purcell. It's the hottest thing going. It's better than ever. Get the home advantage. Join us right here on WSIL TV3. For some time now, several programs in SIU's College of Technical Careers have been in danger of being shut down. Today, students, faculty, and business leaders from around the state met with members of the Faculty Senate to voice their concerns in an effort to save the doomed programs. Even those direct, not directly connected to the college came to stress its value. The residents. And so there are tremendous opportunities across the board in many allied fields uh, where someone going through a program of this nature would have a much better shot at uh, becoming employed. And if we're talking Much of today's discussion focused on reasons why many CTC programs programs will be closed. Many instructors say they haven't been told the full story. The Faculty Senate will vote next Tuesday to determine which of any programs will end. The Carbondale School District needs to, a, to do a better job hiring minority teachers. That's the cry of black leaders in Carbondale. NAACP Education Committee member John Holmes says of the 27 teachers hired since 1987, only six have been minorities. But school board member Nancy Stemper says Carbondale Elementary has done a better job of minority hiring than any other district in southern Illinois. Well, this area is one of the most medically underserved areas in the state. But one hospital is hoping to make it easier for people to get the services they need. Amy Van Patten reports. Massac County's Memorial Hospital is undertaking one of its biggest projects ever. Groundbreaking was today for a $1.4 million outpatient and surgery center that will bring more services to the area. This addition will help us stay up with the times. It'll replace our present surgical department. Uh, the rooms will be state of the art. They'll be big enough to accommodate the equipment that you have to have in surgery now. Massac County's hospital is already one of the most advanced hospitals around for its size. But not many know that. Uh, we do have a hospital-based radiologist here. We have a hospital-based cardiologist. Uh, both of those physicians are offering some services here that, that are relatively unique to a 57-bed hospital. The hospital is located in a rural area, and that increases the need for more services. Massac County Hospital is strategically located in the southern seven counties that have the highest uh, lack of medical services. So that means the, where it's located centrally will help cut down on the geographic problems. That Many people have to go outside the county to receive certain medical services. But hospital administrators hope the new outpatient and surgery center will help make it easier for them to receive the care they need. In Metropolis, Amy Van Patten, News 3. The new wing is scheduled to open sometime near the end of this year. Eating the right foods is like putting the best possible gas in your car. According to Dr. Aduke, it's going to influence how long your body's going to run and how well. The word diet has many meanings. It just depends on who you talk to. For many, it's whatever it is they're eating. For others, it's a constant way of life on a weight reduction program. But for me and many others, it's a necessary key to good health. You want to want to, Jamie? It's abundantly obvious that children must eat to grow and for adults to be able to do their work. It's also pretty clear that most of us enjoy eating. However, it's in the pursuit of these pleasures where problems arise. It's hard to keep in mind that the process of living is like a flowing stream. It's always moving and ever changing. The primary component of your body that makes you a unique living person is a combination of thousands of different proteins out of which things like skin, muscle, bone, and other organs are made. 
These living proteins are in a constant state of change. We need a balanced diet with a source of protein in order to replenish the proteins which the body normally breaks down and metabolizes. Each person also has a certain amount of body fat, some more than others, whose primary function is to provide a constant source of energy-rich fuel to drive this dynamic living process. However, the food you choose to eat will determine how well and how long this incredible thing we call life will continue to function. Balance is the key. It's worth your time to learn what a balanced diet is and to eat it. You can bet your life on it. I'm Dr. Red Duke. Consumers have a new friend in West Frankfurt. Really, it's an old friend who's been away for a while. The Illinois Attorney General's regional office in West Frankfurt closed in 1991, but it reopened today in a new location. The regional office handles thousands of consumer complaints each year. While it was closed, the Carbondale office had to pick up the slack. I think probably the fact that we've had two complaints already this morning when you just simply got opened up would indicate that uh, people find a, a, a third office uh, uh, much more convenient and consequently more helpful. The office isn't completely outfitted yet, but it is open for business and is ready to handle any and all consumer problems. If you're planning to do some outside jobs this week, Jim says you'd better check out the forecast. Meteorologist Jim Razor, certified by both the National Weather Association and the American Meteorological Society. This week is not off to a good start. The question is, is it going to get any better? Not much, if, if it does at all, and, and it's going to be very small, what little uh, good weather we are going to see. Tomorrow is about the only chance of calling it a decent day. Right now on satellite, skies are trying to break up just a little bit. If we look back to the west, more clouds will be in in the next day or so. Clouds over the top of us right now, but a few breaks or at least thin spots starting to show up. This is probably the only chance at clear skies we are going to see all week, and that will come sometime tomorrow. Watching the movement just as quickly as these guys get out of here, the stuff from the west will start to come in. One low already coming out of the northern Rockies, another one way back in the southwest, and those two will combine and push all of this mess in here. Temperatures will go up just a little bit, but so will the chances for rain. High pressure are only hope for any good weather. 53 degrees last hour in St. Louis, out west where we would look for some warmer temperatures behind the warm front. A lot of clouds holding temperatures in the 40s there. It was actually warmer in Minneapolis. They were up to 50 degrees. The same reading in Paducah. Joymer in New Burnside reporting 48. So were the Shasteens in McLeansboro and in Mount Vernon. 46 degrees for West Beatty and Benton. It was 48 in Cape and 45 degrees in Poplar Bluff. 46 was the high for the day, 36 the low this morning, well below the averages of 65 and 43. The record high, 87, set in 1929, and the record low, 22, set in 1944. It is 46 right now, but the wind chill, 38 degrees. It still feels like winter. North winds at 7, 80% relative humidity, 29.95. The barometer falling just under a quarter of an inch of rain for the day for the month, 65 one hundredths, and for the year, 11 and 68 one hundredths. Most of the precipitation well off to our east and moving away from us. Strong thunderstorms once again. Parts of Georgia and South Carolina, a lot of tornadoes overnight and early this morning in parts of Florida. Some damage down there, but no injury reports in. Off to the west, nothing too exciting right now, so maybe we can stay dry tomorrow. And tomorrow morning, it looks like a little bit of sunshine, a few clouds trying to hold on, but our next weather maker already starting to move out of the Denver area, and it's going to push the clouds in all later tomorrow night or Wednesday, and then the rain will follow close behind. For us tonight, decreasing cloudiness, don't look for any clear skies, but it may improve a little bit. Cold conditions, light winds will allow us to fall into the 30s once again for lows. Partly cloudy and warmer tomorrow, southeast winds 5 to 15, and I would say if you have to get outside this week, you might want to do it tomorrow. Highs from around 60 in southern Illinois to the mid-60s in southeast Missouri. Clouds moving back in late tomorrow night, not as cold. Southeast winds holding temperatures back in the 40s, which is closer to what we would expect for the season. Wednesday, look for scattered showers to come in late in the day. Thursday, a chance for thunderstorms. Friday, just plain old showers, but you can see temperatures trying to warm up just a little bit by the end of the week. Lows in the 50s and highs back into the 60s. 6 to 10 day outlook looking a little farther down the road is looking for cool conditions. I don't know when it is ever going to improve. Yeah, when is spring going to start in the nice weather and the sun? And no telling. Okay, Jim, thanks. Sure. The 1993 road construction season is here. Crews began working on a $2 million project on I-57 today. 
The Department of Transportation is replacing six bridges between Johnston City and Mount Vernon. That means the interstate will be down to one lane in both directions at times. IDOT says it hopes to have the project finished before November to beat the holiday traffic crunch. Today is the day baseball fans across the country look forward to. Up next in sports, Mark will have opening day highlights of the Cubs against the Braves. Plus, he'll look ahead to tonight's NCAA championship game. Well, spring is truly here now for baseball fans, Mark. That's right. For sports fans, the season has begun. Baseball fans wait no longer. The regular season is here. It begins with five National League contests, including the debuts of the two expansion teams and four American League games. The Chicago Cubs began the season by facing former teammate Greg Maddox, who started for the Atlanta Braves today, a day for Parkas at Wrigley Field. Mike Morgan, the starter for Chicago, gets touched for a run in the top of the first. Dave Justice with the base hit, driving home Ronnie Gant to give Atlanta a 1-0 lead. Maddox looking sharp in his Braves debut. He snags the comebacker and starts the double play. Runs were hard to come by in this one. After allowing that first inning run, Morgan settled down, holding Atlanta scoreless the rest of the way. But Maddox wins this pitcher's duel with ninth inning help from Mike Stanton. The Braves blank the Cubs 1-0. Down in Miami, the Florida Marlins played their first game against the Dodgers. Charlie Huff, the former White Sox pitcher, looking sharp in his Marlins debut. The Marlins supported him with three runs in the second. The key hit was this two-run triple by Walt Weiss, who later scored to give the Marlins a 3-0 lead. And Charlie Huff and the Marlins go on to win it by a final of 6-3. The Colorado Rockies debuted against the Mets and Dwight Gooden. Former Cardinal Andres Galarraga gets the Rockies' first hit, but hits were hard to come by for the Rockies against Gooden. Bobby Bonilla's solo homer in the fifth put the Mets on top, 2-0, and that was more than enough for Doc. He goes on to win it. Three zip to stand 1-0 on the season. Another National League game, the only other one being played this afternoon. Cincinnati, a winner over Montreal by a score of 2-1. President Clinton helped get the American League season started by throwing out the ceremonial first pitch at the Orioles' home opener. But the Texas Rangers were celebrating when the game was over. Juan Gonzalez waits for the Sutcliffe delivery and connects for a two-run homer to put Texas up 3-1 in the third. Later in the inning, Dean Palmer connects off Rick Sutcliffe. This one also coming with a man on. Gonzalez and Palmer both added solo shots later in the game, and the Rangers top the O's. 7-4. In other American League games, New York a winner over Cleveland behind Jimmy Key and Boston knocks off Kansas City 3-1. Roger Clemens the win in that one. A pair of games take place under the lights tonight. The Cardinals and White Sox open their seasons tomorrow. On the same day that the Major League Baseball season began, the college basketball season comes to an end. Michigan and North Carolina meet tonight for the NCAA title. The game could be decided in the paint where Michigan's Chris Weber squares off against the Tar Heels' Eric Montross. I think we're just going to have to try and deny him the ball whenever possible. And, um, you know, if he wants to take it outside, let him take it outside, and we'll still put our pressure on him. You know, we welcome this challenge. You know, we welcome this challenge. Just like we're going to have to worry about, you know, their inside play, we're going to have to fear our inside play as well. Game time, 8 o'clock tonight in New Orleans, where the Tar Heels won their last national championship. It could be a long season for baseball's expansion teams. Our Stumper asked which expansion teams posted the best and worst records in their first seasons. The best belonged to the L.A. Angels, who finished 7 and 70 and 91 their first season. The worst, the 1962 Mets at 40 and 120. We'll see what Colorado and Florida does this season. Okay, Mark, thank mm -hmm. you. Generally, when you think of problems pertaining to area farms, we think of the weather. But a recent problem in one Illinois county is reminiscent of a Hitchcock movie. Blackbirds have been causing problems for Randolph County farmers over the past few months. In the fall, the birds literally blacked out fields ready for harvest, eating up the farmers' profits. And this winter, livestock farmers reported problems with the birds on their feedlots. Now with the spring planting season just around the corner, another problem is arising. Along the corn row, I mean, they find it. <laughs> um, and they'll just burrow every, if you have 10 inch spacing, you can just see the burrow hole, just where they burrow their beak into the ground and just scoop that kernel right out of the ground. And it's history for that particular plant. A local Farm Bureau spokesman says the problem isn't as bad as it was just a few weeks ago, but the situation could change at any time. 
When we come back, comic strips give their stamp of approval. If you read the comics in today's paper, you may have noticed a central theme in many of them, postage stamps. Stamps are featured in nearly a dozen of the most popular strips. It's part of an effort by cartoonists to draw attention to their quest for a postage stamp honoring 100 years of newspaper comic strips. A spokesman for the U.S. Postal Service says it's certainly a creative way to get the message out, but the comic's centennial isn't until 1995, and commemorative stamps for that year won't be announced until the fall of next year. Recapping our top story tonight, jury selection is scheduled to begin tomorrow in the racketeering trial of former Chester police officer Michael Carando. Today in federal court, a judge ruled the facts that co-defendant John Buskell's guilty plea are based on will not be used against Carando. Buskell committed suicide last week in a prisoner's hospital. Carando is accused of being involved in contract murder and several arsons. Well, Jim, if you head out tonight, better take a jacket. Yeah, you're certainly going to need one. You might even need a heavy coat, depending on how you feel about cool weather. We are somewhere around 45 right now. Lots of clouds, a little bit damp. And it looks like by later tonight, around 40 degrees. One more click and we're down into the 30s. Clouds will stay with us, although I think we will see a few breaks before the evening hours are over with, but certainly not looking for clear skies at all. And now we're going to miss you tonight. Right, I will be gone. Reed Howe will be in the chair. Uh, the Murfreesboro Kiwanis have their honors banquet, 33rd annual, and I will be the speaker there. Looking for see a lot of friendly faces and have a good time. Well, we'll miss you, but have a good time. Okay. Thanks, Jim. That's the early edition of News 3. World News tonight is next. Enjoy your evening, then join us again at 10 o'clock. <laughs>